That's a good question. So community manager uh, is responsible for managing a community. That's the simplest definition as the name suggests, but there is a lot uh, which goes around it. So before we can understand what community manager so hey everyone, I'm Madhvi Asthana, co-founder of Geekscot. And in this video, we have Yash Raj with us, who is currently working as a community growth manager at OutSystems. And he earlier worked with companies like Proget, Scalenza, and Uber. So luckily, I got a chance to meet you when you were in Proget. And since then, I have a couple of questions to ask you. So I am pretty excited to have a conversation with you and ask you the range of questions that I have in my mind. So before moving forward, I want you to throw some light on your own journey so that our audience can connect with you in a better manner. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Madhvi, for having me. Uh, my name is Yashraj, Yashraj Nayak. Uh, I am a coder turned community professional. So I've always been, uh, since my school days, high school days, I have been excited about technology and computers. And um, my journey began with mobile app development. Uh, and uh, uh, through that, I started um, reaching out to other communities uh, because there was no one to talk to. Uh, we started our own community of that particular technology back in the day in Microsoft uh, Technologies. And then that's how my community journey started. And then years later, I joined as a professional community manager. Uh, and uh, I realized there is a role like this. There is a role. There are role like developer relations, developer advocates, or technical community managers. So I, I joined as a community manager, and uh, I was responsible for running programs for developer audience. So that allowed me to connect with a lot of developers uh, and the companies they work for. So one thing led to another. Uh, currently, I'm in OutSystems, uh, working as a APAC community growth manager. OutSystems is, is a uh, web and mobile app development platform from Portugal, and we have hundreds and thousands of developers who are uh, using the platform. So we run the programs to bring them together and help them succeed. So according to you, what are the roles and responsibilities of a community manager? Yeah, that's a good question. So community manager uh, is responsible for managing a community that's the simplest definition as the name suggests but there is a lot uh, which goes around it so before we can understand what community manager does we need to understand what a community is so community is a group of people like-minded individuals coming together uh, who share the same interests uh, similar interests and uh, they want to achieve a common goal so they come together and it's often the community manager who brings them together who invites them to the community and helps them navigate uh, through the journey through the experience so a typical community member of any community uh, usually goes through a cycle where when they enter they are they are a newbie they are a new member of the community they are getting to know each other and they are trying to understand uh, what what is there in the community and what kind of members they meet new people and then usually they start contributing so community managers encourage them to contribute they share different ways they can contribute and community members can can choose any of those ways can decide how they want to contribute to the community and uh, that makes the community even more strong and then um, it comes the full cycle where uh, in more new members come and then the members who are existing members they welcome the new members and the community goes on the cycle goes on so this experience is what community manager manages um, however in the industry today there there is a perception or there is a narrative that community manager is not the correct term to define this role because and then i sort of agree with that because community doesn't need management right it is not something which uh, is it's not a typical management. So community is special group of people. It 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 is like it it's like it it has its own life. It has its own identity. So uh, a better term which is popular, which is getting popular slowly these days, is community advocate. So the person is advocating for the members of the community. Um, uh, what that means is that the person is is there for them and whatever um, they have uh, if they have any questions they can 
contact this person and so on. So community advocate is something which I also prefer over community manager because community doesn't need to be managed. <laughs> it, uh, it needs someone who can, who can lead by example and advocate for the members and understand, um, understand what they want and ensure that they get what they are looking for. Yeah. So you always wanted to become a community manager since I saw in your LinkedIn profile that you did your computer uh, in information technology engineering Correct. from RGPV. So you always wanted to become a community manager or it was not planned? It was, it was not planned. It's like most of the community professionals uh, end up in this role accidentally <laughs> by chance like something somewhere happened to them and then they found this role most of them didn't even know including me that this role exists for a long long time so as i said before i was developing mobile apps and i was in my comfort zone and uh, that there was a moment where i couldn't find people to talk to about my problems or uh, about new things i can do so i realized that there is a need of a new community and that's how that community uh, journey got started so i was uh, coincidentally i was in college i was also a part of a program from microsoft called microsoft student partners so that that's a global community of of um, student ambassadors uh, who run a lot of activities within their own campus so i i was i was active in that not not only in my campus but also i connected with other student partners in india and across the world and i ran activities with them international activities, citywide activities, big campaigns we did. So that actually helped me to move further, closer to the community professional uh, experience. So slowly people started to suggest me that, hey, Yashraj, why don't you try this full time? Why don't you try this as a role? And uh, I searched a little bit online and I realized, I found out that there are, there are roles like developer relations, there are uh, developer advocates or community managers. And uh, I I decided to give it a try. So there were no companies at that time, big known companies who were hiring uh, scholar students. <laughs> no company uh, was keen to do that. Like all of them, especially developer relations, it requires core development experience, software engineering experience to to be able to do that job well, and which is which is understandable. So I, I moved towards startups. So startups. Uh, didn't, didn't mind if you're a student, if you have a degree or not, which college you're from, where are you from? They don't, you know, they don't care. What they care about is your skills. Can you do what you're saying you can do, right? And uh, one startup, Skillenza, uh, they trusted me and I joined them as a community manager. Uh, I, while I was still in college, so I, I did uh, those, I did that. Uh, I did my college actually became a secondary <laughs> Thing. like I used to only come for exams and then most of the time I was in Bangalore uh, running community activities. So that's how my journey journey uh, went from there. I joined ProGate after that and then after staying in ProGate for close to three years, I joined OutSystems where I am now. So uh, I hope that answers your question that I, I found out this role just like most of the community professionals, but I decided to stay stay uh, many many people when they come uh, into this profession they enjoy uh, this uh, uh, for some time and then they realize that they still want to focus on something it could be like core engineering so some people actually go back to software development or engineering or you know other roles but most of the people they stay and uh, there are people in industry who have been community professional for over 20 years, 30 years, long, long time. Yeah. So um, many people want to become community manager after their engineering degree. But as you mentioned, even during your time, it wasn't possible uh, to get a job in a good company as a community manager. Yeah. Even I'm a 2020 batch passer from RGPV. Yeah. And when, when I uh, when I was looking for management jobs, since I was really interested in community work, I was also in Microsoft Student Massive program. Yeah. And when I was trying to looking for that, I wasn't able to contact the startups or the companies. And I was clear about the fact that what for what they are looking for, like the skill set that one should have in order to become a community manager. Correct. So 
primarily the skill set which most of the companies look for is having some community contributions. So being a part of some communities, it could be college communities or primarily college communities are good to start with, but we need to be involved in some global communities, some communities which are not just confined within the college, but also um, they have a uh, expanded reach, not only with students, but also some professionals. That is exactly what, what we did, what I did uh, in uh, in my early days, the user group, the community which we started, it was not only for students, uh, everyone was welcome and specifically we were actually focusing on professionals. There have been many events where we tried so hard to bring majority professionals because uh, that's what we wanted because students as an audience uh, like we could we could always have them uh, that was not a problem but uh, bringing professionals to our to your events that's that's not very easy so uh, uh, having having done that uh, the companies i was interviewing with uh, took a note of it they really understood that i don't have experience with not only student communities but also some professional communities and some development experience I do have and that that really added up uh, apart from that what matters is your communication skills how well you are able to convey um, how 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 well you can tell a story so storytelling is is a very good skill to have uh, if if someone is looking for a community role apart from that presentation skills public speaking skills all these skills come come in handy so how so someone can demonstrate that they have these skills is Again, by work, by work in the sense, I'm not saying professional work, but it can be a YouTube video, which they have taken, or uh, it can be a blog post. It can be a project which they have created for the community and which is now being used by other people, something like that. So that is 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 proof and companies um, really, really, really value that. Yeah. Do you think, uh personal branding is important in order to become community manager? I would say it's good to have, but not necessary. It definitely um, uh, puts you in much better position because you are already a little bit known in the ecosystem community. And also uh, by being known, I don't mean that how many people know about you, but by, by that, I mean that you have done some uh, work which people know about so that there is a difference right uh, for example uh, bill gates right how many people know bill gates that's one thing and how many people know what bill gates has done that's another thing so i'm talking about the another thing so that's that's what that's the second thing so that's what i mean by super so those people who have a personal brand uh I would say if they have the second case, which means a lot of people know what they have done, what kind of experiences they have, that really adds up because um, that kind of, in many cases, shortens the route, right? You can skip a lot of steps in between. You can directly talk to the hiring manager or hiring managers approach you if you have good presence and if people know what you have done and what you're doing. So hiring managers can approach you rather than you applying. That is one thing. Apart from that, um, uh, because your work is already there in public, uh, they don't have to get or, you know, uh, like extract a lot of from you. They already know a little bit about you. So that that's always a plus thing. They can ask relevant questions about you. So having a personal brand always helps. But um, uh, I'm, I'm saying it's not necessary. People without a lot of presence or personal brand as in like uh, if they are not very active, they even they can give it a try. Uh, they will have to uh, do a little bit more efforts. They have to put a little more efforts to share their story to you know to convey uh, that they have what it takes to be a community professional so yeah i think um, it, it helps how do you compete with your competitors on social medias uh, by competitor what do you what do you mean like is it companies I or mean, is it other people i mean uh, since uh, the job of community manager is to manage the communities yeah. since you mentioned that in the beginning yeah. so is there any way to compete with the competitors for example similar to our system there must be another companies who are doing the same work same set of work so you need to 
be advanced in terms of social media marketing since it's it, it's an important aspect in today's time so how do you manage that yeah we we actually don't hear word competition a lot in 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 world of community like or in in the ecosystem because why i will tell you uh, because uh, communities are always uh, a two way uh, street so being a community professional we are advocating for the community community members and at the same time um there is a quote like uh, uh, 50% of the time we are representing the community and 50% of the time we are representing the company so it's a 50 50% and we need to have both of their interest all the time in our mind so we can't we can't always think about our company uh and uh, you know uh, think very little about our community so there is there is a difference uh, in the sense when you always think you are when you're mostly thinking only about the company and not the community uh, then you might uh, be you know focused a lot on competitors what other competitors are doing and stuff like that but when you are when you have both the interest all you know uh, at all times 50 50% then your mind does not actually go a lot about competitors you are very focused on what your company wants what the community wants and then giving it to them so i'm actually you know uh 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 hearing like very we we usually hear very little um it it might be some comparisons that some community members comparing one platform to another that might happen or um there is some event happening where people are saying that they come from xyz and now they are you know doing let's say out systems and that's you know this is what they like that might happen but usually it's 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 not um you know we don't mind that much it's it's not something which we talk a lot a lot about because we have a lot of our own things to focus on uh and other thing is that um uh, we as as i said we focus on what community wants what the company wants and uh uh end of the day community mem- members right who are like normal people like you and me right developers uh many people are often part of multiple communities right so they might be part of not only our community but a com- uh, com- community of our competitor brand as well right and then that's that's totally normal that happens uh, like all the time and then uh community often is a you know uh, like a competitive advantage to for, for for most of the brands so uh, because a lot of companies might have similar offerings um, you know, but uh, how well they connect with their community how big is their community how connected is their community makes a difference so that's what um, helps the members decide which community they want to be more active in so yeah being a community professional uh, this side of uh, of the table we don't really uh, Uh, mind much about competition because we have a lot our own things uh, to handle and take care of yeah so as a community manager do you really open all the communities and check what are the updates in your community let's say if, uh, people are now, now more active on discord so do you do you manage all the communities or uh, it is the responsibility of different members of your company yeah so that's a good question it actually depends on community to community or company to company uh, for us usually uh, we we don't have uh, public uh, discord or slack or 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 like that we have because we have our own in house uh, uh, platform called forums so we have our systems forums where that's where people go and discuss they can ask questions they can talk to each other so forums is the is the platform which we manage uh we do have some other um we do we do use other platforms as well but for smaller scale from case to case basis for example if we are having a global hackathon for that particular hackathon we might create a slack workspace and then we manage that workspace for that particular time duration but most of the times it's the forums uh, where uh, the community members go and meet other than that it's the events so we have uh, user group events we have our own uh, events which we do and user group events are usually from the community by the community so those events all these events uh, and experiences they allow community members to come together so um, yeah so for in our case in my case current role we don't have 
a lot of different platforms which we have to manage um, at all times. Uh, it's ma- it's majorly our forums and uh, uh, from case to case basis we might use some platform, but it's for that duration only. Yeah. Do you think social media presence or experience is important as a community manager? I I think it it is uh, as as my, as I answered pre- previously. It is good to have. Uh, it definitely adds up uh, to your to your profile. If you have understanding of how different social media platforms work, uh, that will help you understand um, when there is a need. That will help you to quickly take decision on which platform to go forward with. For example, when we have a hackathon, uh, and then we understand that uh, a lot of our members are already aware of, or they have experience with Slack, they have they are already part of Slack communities. We, we will create a Slack workspace, right? We will not create a Facebook user group, Facebook group, because we will know that um, not many of our members are active on Facebook. So that's why we will go with Slack. That's an experience to have. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, the, in, there, there are some countries where Facebook is much more popular. Uh, so there people prefer to you know talk on Facebook. So if you have that understanding that which platform is popular where and how, what are the, you know, uh, facilities, what are the features which your community can utilize in which platform, because no platform is perfect. Let's face it. That's the reality. There is no one perfect platform, which will, you know, be good for all kinds of communities. There is no such platform. So there are always, you know, you have to, you have to compromise somewhere. And so, you know, but uh, what we try to do is to minimize that level of compromise so that it that doesn't affect our uh, members experience. It doesn't um, uh, negatively affect uh, the goal which we are trying to achieve. Yeah. So having some social media experience really helps uh, in that sense. Yeah. I am really confused between two terms that is dev relations and community manager. I often get confused when I read the post that they are looking for dev relations or community managers. So can you tell me the difference between them? That's a good question. So I, for a long time, I also think I also used to think uh, what is the difference. But um, in a broader way, uh, if we look at in the sense that community manage manager, uh, community is a is a common term. It's a I would say neutral term, right? So any any group of individuals coming together is a community. And if there is a person who is actually running that community is a community manager. So it doesn't have to be a developer community. It can be any community, right? It can be a community of teachers. It can be a community of uh, musicians or, or so on, right? So that's a common, it's a common, I would say, um, uh, neutral term. And then developer relations uh, is more related to developers. So it's not more, it's actually the community members, there are developers, right? So hence we call it developer relations uh, professionals or DevRel, uh, developer relations teams. So for example, my team is called developer relations team at our systems. So because our, our members, our core audience are developers. So that's why, uh, and then we may manage relations with them. We manage how, you know, how they are navigating um, in their journey, how they're growing. So all those kind of things, come into DevRel and uh, what kind of projects they can build and then things like that. So developer relations is primarily for developers as a, as a community member, while community manager can be for any community, right? It doesn't have to be developer community. It can be any community. So that's, that's the primary difference. Um, other than that, if we look at from a different perspective, uh, if we only look at developer audience, right? Only. Like if we know that yeah, um, uh, the audience is developers, then developer relations become an umbrella term. It's like at the top, uh, you have developer relations uh, team. And then under that, you might have developer advocates and community managers, often called technical community managers, but mostly people call community managers. So developer advocates are the ones who have engineering experience. They have you know, real development experience maybe 10, 15, 25, 20 years, and they have done what developers do for a long, long time. That's why they understand what developers need and they can, you know, put their themselves in their shoes. And they often create 
new apps or you know create resources they they take sessions at conferences or they you know uh, deliver feedback uh, they answer questions deep technical questions from the community so that is developer advocates and on the other hand is community managers who actually run the programs so the programs for example user groups so we have a user group program at our systems and we have like hun- close to 60 70 uh, and more user groups across the world user group program is one such program where and then we have more programs like mvp program champions program education program all these programs somebody needs to run them right uh, so that's what community team does um and uh, yeah so we have in my in my team at our systems we have different people who are responsible for different programs so um and as and when we need help from developer advocates they get involved and they help us with uh, more technical uh, point of view rest community managers are the ones who actually run the programs so yeah that's that's the terminal and both of them like both these teams are part of developer relations team so that's what happens in a typical uh, developer relations team <laughs> in a tech company in a yeah big tech company uh one more question related to this uh, yeah. what are the tools and technologies that uh, that one should learn in order to join any of the company as a manager as a dev relations so that that really depends on the interest of a particular person so and that goes back to what they have what technologies they like as a developer first because every developer relations professional developer advocate or technical community manager just as me has in most cases has you know we do have some technical experience right we have done and and that really uh, helps us to connect with our developer audience so in the beginning as i said like i was really involved in microsoft communities why because i was developing on microsoft technologies and that's what i liked at the same time there were a lot of google technologies or oracle or you know other things as well were already have java or other things happening as well but i had my focus on microsoft technologies c sharp windows and azure things like that so i because i i liked that was my preference i uh, you know uh, it it's it's common to have developers to have some you know preferred technologies which they like and then they go they go deep in the, in that and that those people who actually go deep they actually learn more about some particular set of technologies rather than trying to learn everything it's often people who focus on some set you know particular set of technologies which they like and then they'll try to learn everything there is about that technology those developers are in much better position often you know they they get much better roles because they have deeper knowledge in you know uh, a set of technologies compared to having only surface level level knowledge of in everything right so that's and then when those developers go for a developer relations uh, roles uh, they often yeah that's what defines your your company what kind of company or what which company uh, uh, you will apply for because if you are someone who is looking for uh, a company which uh, let's say these days uh, blockchain and all other things are very much in dem- like buzzwords so if you are if you are a blockchain developer and you obviously would look for a company uh, which has a developer relations team uh, a blockchain company which has a developer relations team something like that so um, uh, that's an example or if another example would be if you uh, are in in so much into app development right so a lot of companies who have a platform which allow uh, developers to build apps just as our systems right so you would prefer to join a company like that because you have some app development experience or you like that so that's that's how it is So yeah. can a non-IT person uh, join a company as a community manager, or it's not possible? It is possible. Like if you look at community manager as a as a uh, neutral term, if you are not very much concerned about developers, if you are you know if you are just enthusiastic about community, any community, then nothing is stopping you. So I think the first step would be to figure out which industry 
you would like to go after right is it education industry is it music industry is it uh, entertainment industry uh, i think it's the same but yeah is it tech- technology industry is it um, uh, financial industry right there are a lot of industries out there so you need to figure out which industry you want to go after and you you want to go in and then there will be companies who might be hiring community managers so yeah that that's how it is like even non technical professionals if they are enthusiastic about communities in general if they are passionate about building communities and helping communities grow uh why not right uh when it comes to developer communities having some technical exposure will definitely help i'm not saying it's absolutely necessary because i know a lot of people who are in tech companies in developer relations teams don't have any development experience or background but they are doing absolutely amazing how and why because they are able to understand they are able to put themselves in you know uh, community member shoes and they are a quick learner so i've seen a lot of people who don't come from tech background they are in a company which is a tech company and they are in a community team and they are doing amazing why because they keep learning so uh, if there is a question which they don't know answers to they try to figure out themselves or they ask someone within within the company and they you know try to figure out so those are the people who actually succeed uh, we need a go get get getter attitude so nothing is impossible uh, if if technology industry is something which you like but you don't have a technical background there is still a is still a chance that you can make it your way given that that you have passion to learn or to at least understand what different technologies are because that really helps yeah so geek squad is a community of freshers and students and as a fresher it's uh, quite difficult to approach the company so what could be the possible way to approach uh, the recruiters or hiring managers for this position since just after applying the job we cannot grab the job as a fresher are you saying like community manager or developer relations community manager yeah so for for freshers i would say uh, uh it it would be better to have some contributions some you know some speaking experience some blogs some youtube videos uh, some you know that would be really handy uh, before they go and apply for a job because uh there are two type of companies who look for experienced professionals right and then other companies who look for skilled professionals doesn't matter if they have professional experience or student experience or volunteering experience right so in my case when i joined my first company they uh, were looking for a skilled professional they were not looking for a like a experienced professional who has done work with other companies right they were looking for a skilled professional and then they didn't really care that if i was if i was a student and uh, because but because i had done contributions uh, in different communities at a at a large scale so they were able to um, uh, move forward uh, so that's what matters i would say straight away without having contributions applying to a community role might not be a very good idea uh it's 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 first important to understand what community means how what it means to contribute to a community uh and what unique contributions you have done um what has been your impact you need to have those answers ready a little bit uh before you apply because that's what you are supposed to do as a, even if you get the job uh but if you don't know what a community means uh, and how to you know help your community members uh if you have not done that in any capacity you will have a little bit hard time uh i'm not saying it will be impossible but yeah so that's that's the thing so that's why companies usually prefer to hire those who have at least done something if 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 not professionally as a volunteer right as a some some capacity they must have done something some contributions so that that's what i uh, suggest to students uh, give it some time right there is no hurry to straight away apply soon after you graduate give it if you don't have time during your college to contribute in communities take few months um, while doing something else uh, primarily take community contributions as a secondary you know a uh, thing like o- over weekends you can talk or you can you can do so over 3 to 6 months you will have a good 
number of contributions already uh, collected and you will be in much better position to apply and get the job yeah so what are your short term and long term plans so that's that's a very broad question but yeah short term plans is to help uh, our uh, uh, community grow so here at out systems we have a range of programs currently going on uh, we have a lot um, to uh, you know we have uh, there is a lot of potential uh, for our community members to grow in different regions because asia pacific is a large large region so we have india malaysia singapore uh, australia uh, indonesia all these countries the developers and the community members have their unique needs so we are growing our programs in each of these regions each of these countries uh, that is my short term goal uh, to to expand uh, to as many developers as possible and to help them to reach them and help them to learn this new skill uh, and to succeed that is my short term goal long term goal is to um, is to again learn uh, as much as i can uh, about different technologies uh, because i think it's really important to stay up to date so when i was doing windows development uh, that was that was still a thing that time but now nobody even talks about it windows phone development right everyone talks about javascript or 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 python or whatever popular technologies we have today so it's really important to be to be known so my long term plan would be to be a uh, uh, to have experience uh, in uh, you know by working with different technologies um, so that we can so that i can i can grow as a as a developer relations professional yeah so that's that's my answer okay so here we end and our interview thank you so much for your time and support thank you thank you madhvi for having me and yeah have have a great day thank you